My name is Jonathan Goforth. Today we're going to talk about some more math questions. This is to help you pass the real estate exam. And so we're going to talk about how you pass the test. But first, please give this video a like and you've got to subscribe because all my other videos are about how to help you make a lot of money in real estate, how to help you be a successful realtor. But right now, all I want to have you concentrate on are test questions. Just pass the test. Then come back to all my other videos later after you got your real estate license and do everything else. But for now, click subscribe. Next to the word subscribe is a little bell icon. You're going to want to turn that on so you get notified of future videos. So I've got lots of really good topics coming out later on everything regarding real estate. So I've been a realtor for 25 years. I'm licensed in Kansas and Missouri. I've got my broker's license also in Missouri, and this is the most awesome career. So I'm excited you're about to become a realtor. Unlimited income potential. Uh, yes, it can be very, very lucrative. I've been honored to be in Forbes magazine for the past three years, listed in there as one of the top market leaders in the country. So thanks for watching today. Please click subscribe. Please give it a like, and let's jump right into some math questions. On this video, we're going to do three math questions. That's all we're gonna do, but this is a good video because these three math questions are really good ones to practice with. If there's a good chance you might see questions very similar to these on your real estate exam. So let's uh, read this first one, read it with me. A house sold for $400,000. The buyer took out an 80% loan with a 4% interest rate paid $3,000 in closing costs, and paid three discount points. What was the total amount due at closing by the buyer? So read it again with me. Let's read it again. A house sold for $400,000. The buyer took out an 80% loan with a 4% interest rate, paid $3,000 in closing costs, and paid three discount points. What was the total amount due at closing by the buyer? So the first thing I'm going to do, let's figure the down payment. And so there's two ways to do it. Uh, the first way, we're going to take the $400,000 price times 80%, which is 0 0.80. That equals $320,000 for the loan. And then we take $400,000 minus the $320,000 loan equals $80,000 for the down payment. Or you can just take $400,000 times 20% and that gets you also $80,000. So that is the down payment. That is 20% of the $400,000. So next, let's figure those three discount points. I changed that to blue. See where it says, and paid three discount points. Now, lately in the last few years in real estate, we haven't really used discount points because interest rates are so great, there's really very little reason to buy it down. So if you're a brand new uh, brand new to real estate, you're just now studying for your exam, you might have always wondered, what is a discount point? Well, a discount point is 1% of the loan. So in this case, uh, we have three discount points. That's what the buyer's going to have to pay is three discount points. So the way we figure that, we take the loan. Remember, we just figured the loan of $320,000 times 3%, which 3% is the same as 0 0.03, and that equals $9,600 for those three points. And that's, that's how points work. So one point would be 1% of the loan amount. And so that's why this is 3% of the loan amount. So that's our next amount right there, $9,600 that the buyer's going to owe at closing. So next, 
Let's read the beginning of this again. A house sold for $400,000. The buyer took out an 80% loan with a 4% interest rate. Now, on some of these math questions, they're going to give you too much information. We don't need to know the interest rate. So when it says with a 4% interest rate, you don't do anything with that. It has nothing to do with figuring the answer we're looking for. It has nothing to do with the amount due at closing by the buyer. So I put a big X on that, and this made the question a whole lot easier. So let's add up what we have. The only amount left, and I made it blue, is the $3,000 in closing costs. They give that to us. We don't have to figure anything. So look there in red. What we have is $80,000 in down payment, which we figured, plus $9,600 for those points, plus the $3,000 in closing costs that they give us right there in the question. And that adds up to a grand total of $92,600. That is the amount that the buyer is going to owe at closing. And that's your answer, $92,600. So before I click on the second question, couple just little pieces of advice, some suggestions for you as you come into the testing center. Uh, number one, you're gonna wanna make sure you bring a calculator, a real calculator. Uh, don't think that you're going to get to use your phone <laughs> at, the, at your desk when you're taking the exam because you don't get to use your phone. You have to turn your phone off and you put your phone away. So since we use the calculators on our phones, typically, you're going to want to bring a real calculator. Make sure you've practiced with it. Make sure the buttons work. Make sure the battery works in it since we're not used to using real calculators. When you come into the testing center, they're going to give you a piece of blank paper, just scratch paper. You're going to want to bring a pencil, uh, bring a couple of pencils. Uh, the, the blank scratch paper is there for you to do these math questions. That's its purpose. And so that's to scribble all over, uh, work them out so you get the correct answer. Um, and really, my last piece of advice, subscribe. Subscribe to my videos because once you pass this test, you are ready to begin the best career ever imaginable. And that's what all my other videos are for, is to help you make a lot of money in real estate. And uh, Make sure you turn on your little bell icon so you're getting notified. All right, let's read this next question. A property with a market value of $200,000 had a tax assessment rate of 17%. The tax rate was $4 per $100 of assessed value. How much are the real estate taxes? Oh, this is a great question. This is a good one. So if you're not familiar with these T diagrams, it's a great little way to help do math problems like this. So in this case, we're going to figure two percentages to get to the correct answer. And so in black, you'll see a T in that diagram. So you first just draw a big T. And then on the bottom left, you're going to put the big number, the whole number. In this case, it's $200,000. And then on the bottom right, you're going to put the rate. And in this case, it's the assessment rate of 17%. So to get the top number, which is a part of the $200,000, you can multiply the bottom two numbers across from each other. That big red X means multiply. So to get the assessed value, that's the first thing we need to get, the assessed value. We're going to take $200,000 times 17%. And so now you can see across the top right there in red, the assessed value equals... $200,000 times 0.17. That's what you do with 17%. You scoot the decimal point to the left two places, makes that 0.17.
You multiply those together and you get $34,000. So now, let's read the question again. A property with a market value of $200,000 had a tax assessment rate of 17%. The tax rate was $4 per $100 of assessed value. And that's what we just figured. We figured the assessed value, and that's where we got that $34,000. But now, look at that $4 per $100, because we're going to do another T diagram. We're going to figure another, another percentage. So in case you're wondering, and I'll tell you, most realtors, I don't know why, we don't really enjoy math. <laughs> we just don't. Uh, it's, it's relatively easy when somebody is explaining it, <laughs> but just to figure it out, sometimes it's a little bit uh, intimidating. And so what is $4 per $100? Well, that equates to 4%. And the way you get a percent, you take 4 divided by 100 equals 4%. And if you see a question similar to this, that's just how you do it. And so, or just do that in your head, 4% is how we're going to figure this next T diagram. Now, remember what we're after. Remember the question. How much are the real estate taxes? Now, this is a question, uh, and I'll be honest, a lot of the things you learn in real estate school, a lot of the things that you're practicing for to pass the exam, you're not going to use on a regular basis in your real estate career. But this is a situation where people are wondering, how much are my taxes gonna be? Um, you might wonder it yourself, especially on new construction, how much are taxes gonna be on a brand new constructed house where nobody has a uh, tax bill yet? And this is how you figure it. So what we're gonna do, draw another T. That's the lines in black, put a big multiplication x on the bottom there, and let's figure now we have a different whole number, which is the $34,000 that we just got on the other T diagram. And our rate on the bottom right is 4%. So what we're looking for is a part, a part of the whole. So it's gonna be a smaller number than that $34,000. And so, we're going to multiply $34,000 times 0 0.04, and that gives us $1,360 in taxes. That's your answer. That is the correct answer, and that's how much the real estate taxes are, $1,360. If you use a T diagram like that, and you remember, put your big number, the whole number, the bottom left, and put the rate at the bottom right, you're going to get these right. It's just a consistent way of doing these questions. Or if they give you a part and the rate, then you would divide. And you take your top number, and you can divide it by either of the bottom numbers to get the other bottom number. And so that's how you do that. Again, you take your top number, if you have the top number, and you divide it by the bottom number if you're looking for the other bottom number. And that's how you do that one. All right, let's do our last and final question. As soon as you're done with this next question, go below in the remarks of this video. Underneath this video, in the description, I have other links. Those are test questions. It's a whole bunch of links to more test questions. And there's some other math questions. There's a whole bunch of generic questions. The more questions you can practice with, the much more comfortable and confident you're going to be going into the exam. And as soon as you pass it, you're done with the exam. Then come back as a brand new realtor and check out all my other videos on how to make a lot of money selling homes. But don't look at that yet. Just concentrate on passing this test. All right, let's read this last question. A lot measured 80 feet by 100 feet with the front 
being 80 feet across. It was valued at $3 per square foot plus $20 per front foot. What is the total value of the lot? So we're going to read it again, and I'm going to show you how to, how to answer this. I will tell you this. I saved the easiest one for last. So let's read it again together. A lot measured 80 feet by 100 feet, with the front being 80 feet across. It was valued at $3 per square foot plus $20 per front foot. What is the total value of the lot? So the first thing we're going to do, 80 times 100 feet equals 8,000 square feet. And we take that times the $3. And that equals $24,000. Now, we're going to add to that 80 because we have the frontage. Across the front, it says, being 80 feet across. And it's an additional $20 per front foot. So we're going to take 80 feet times the $20. That equals $1,600. And you simply add those together. So $24,000 plus $1,600 gives you a grand total of $25,600 for the total value of the lot. That's all that is. You're figuring the area first, the 80 times 100 feet to get the total square footage of the lot. And then you're adding the extra $20 per foot across the front. And you know the frontage was 80 feet across. That's all that one is. And that's a really good one. I will tell you this. Some of the math questions are really simple. I think that's a pretty simple straightforward question. Some of them are more complicated. But here's the good news about the math questions in general. If you just miss every single math question, I have heard that there are so few math questions on the total exam, if you get all the other questions correct and you miss every single math question, you get all of them wrong, you get wrong every single math question, you're still going to pass the test. There's just not that many math questions. But this way you can practice some because when you get to the math questions, you simply break it down. This is what I tell my kids. I've got three kids. And the way you handle these math questions is step by step, little steps to get to the final answer. And you'll get them right. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please give this video a like. And now make sure you click below all the different links and just practice, practice, practice and go pass that exam.